Okay, hey you guys, so I own a company called Dark Timber Custom Knives. My name's Peter Kohler. I'm a bladesmith. Um, I'm not in the ABS. I just am like a self-taught bladesmith. I'm currently apprenticing under Jason Knight from Forged in Fire, and I've just been lucky enough to work with guys I think are the best knife makers in the world or bladesmiths in the world. Adam DeRosiers. Nice. Claudio Sobral. Sam Lurkwin, who's won this show here at Blade multiple years in a row. Just, just guys that... that are amazing and I, I you know I'm lucky to be able to do that nice. I also I became my work became kind of sought after I got to a point where people wanted more knives than I could produce and so I started uh, making pro well first I designed for Bark River I made a knife called nice. the Grizzly um, and then when that when that was kind of not what I wanted to do anymore I wanted to do my own thing I started my own mid tech facility nice. and now I am also making you know semi semi custom production awesome. knives. So so what's on the table here Peter? Give okay, us a so, give us an overview. So there's a reason why I brought the knives that I brought today. This is actually called you guys have sold our 1911. I'm a shooter. I love the 1911 nice. platform. You guys can take your glocks and do whatever you want with them. <laughs> not I a, like guns not, that don't not work not unless they're oiled. Um, so <laughs> but so I was like I wanted to make a knife you know that would match my 1911s that was a larger carry so i did it and, and that's been on your site and if people go to look i think there's pictures there they can yeah. check out the 1911. new for me this year is a 1911 commander so if you like 1911s you know that they, they make a four and a quarter inch barrel it's a slightly smaller size nice that's this is meant to fill that gap may i yeah of course um Beautiful. the handle is based on a skinner handle that jason knight and i designed and the blade is basically the blade that I use for the 1911 shrunk down. It won't be this thick, okay. but I forged this and it's 35 layers of Damascus. It's like a quick, you know, just a layered billet. Um, in production, it'll be probably Nitro V, which is ABL with the nitrogen infusion to make the steel hold an edge for a longer period of time. Yeah, sweet. It's a beautiful piece. Thanks. So, so when you sit down to make a knife, you're you're kind of drawing on all these influences. You're drawing on nothing mm -hmm. fancy. You're drawing on 1911s. Yep. And this is kind of what comes out of all of that. Exactly. So, I mean, this is something that would be directly out of like yep. nothing fancy. What's the story? What's okay. The so story? this is a collaboration knife um, that Jason Knight and I made. I forged it. Then Jason grind the fuller and the swedge. I ground this portion. Then I hand sanded it. Then we heat treated it together and he took it home and put the handle on it. And now it's here with me at the show. But like, you know, like I said, you know, nothing fancies, why big knives don't suck. This is a direct result of watching him, watching him use kukris. Jason's a kukri guy. Um, and that, and then taking that like, okay, the use portion. That's what nothing does, right? He goes out oh, and yeah. uses it. How's it's it gonna work? POUs, yeah. right? Right, philosophy of use. Yep. So you take that use portion and then you take what happens in the custom. The, there's been a great trend in knife in in production knives over the last ten years, where you're starting to get actual handles on knives. For a long time, and I love SE. One of my favorite knives in the world is the is the SE6. I own seven SEs, six wow. knives, the same knife over wow. and over again because I just love them. Nice. But you can see, you know, LT Wright started producing handles that were more rounded for them. That, that, those are cues from the custom world that I would like to take to another level. So if you, if you look at my 1911s you guys already sell, they're completely contoured like a custom knife, but the handle scales are removable. So you can clean out the insides and do all nice. the performance stuff you want to do. The big knives are all affected by that. Use first, then take that use and elevate it to the level of what a custom knife, if a guy is going to spend you know, $3,000 on a knife, well, maybe you could just spend 200, 300 bucks on it, get the same exact performance because you just don't care about those other things. And so I'm trying to bring that to the market. Nice. Um, and, cool. and those influence, that, th that type of influence goes in to something like this, Beautiful. especially when it comes to production. Beautiful. Love it. Your, your work is unique in the sense that like sometimes I'll pick up a knife and I'm like, it doesn't have any warmth to it. Mm -hmm. Your knives have like this human warmth to them. I really, and I don't know how to that. describe that. I but really it's, appreciate that. It's like some things are too perfect. Mm -hmm. Yours have a human element that's really pretty. Yeah. 
really, He's really saying nice. that my lines aren't straight enough. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what you <laughs> no, just... No, that's not true. I did not say that. <laughs> They're totally straight enough, guys. <laughs> now, if you look at this just, line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, I, I really do appreciate that, but I think oh, that forging can bring that out in a knife more than anything else. I'm known for a style called brute to forge, where hammer marks are left in, in it, yeah. and often after you've forged it, more hammer marks are introduced just for a greater effect. Yeah. So you're trying, so the aesthetic and the feel mean so much more. And I think forging does that. Bringing that to, bringing that to mid techs and to stock removal knives that come from a factory has been a, a real challenge. And I think when you guys see like my bushcrafter you're gonna get in just a couple weeks, yeah. I think you will feel through the handles that same thing. Have you ever held a fiddleback forge? Uh huh. Yeah. And, and the, the nicer ones with the real nice handles. Yep. And you're like, this feels super loved, right? Same feeling? Yep, that's that's what you've got going on here. Yeah, and so oh, on yeah. my, but on the mid text, that is also like, hey, Andy, you make awesome knives, so fiddle back for a big shout out. But, the, yeah. you know, I, I respect the whole craft, and I think that kind of, you can put that into mid tech knives, you can put it into production knives, but you have to focus on it. So, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Well, and talking about warmth, talking about that human element, mm -hmm. um, there was something that, I didn't realize how big of a following you had. I do. And yeah. they're, they call themselves the Brotherhood. So I, this is something that really intrigues so me. So really what happened was another guy, I had like my Facebook page, Yeah. just Dark Timber Custom Knives, and it like reached like, it had reached, I think it was 5,000 people. And I was so excited. I was like, we're at like 5,000 people. Yes. And someone from the group was like, we need to start a subgroup. And I was like, no, no, don't start a sub. <laughs> don't take it away. Already, yeah, like, you're going to take momentum. That's exactly yeah. what I thought. <laughs> so this guy starts this subgroup, and I'm like, well, what are we going to do in there? And I started to talk. I started to, while I was working, talk about life, philosophy, use of knife philosophy, political philosophy. Um, and as that group grew, I mean, first year was like, I came to Blade Show three years ago and there were 300 people in the group. Wow. And the week after I got home from Blade Show, it was like 6,000 and now we're at like 14,000. Wow. wow. And because of that, so, so it's a closed group. If you're a knife maker and you want to post your work on my page, you can't. You can't even put a picture. If you have a knife and you love it you can, and it's somebody else's, you can't put that picture on my page. Right. People thought I was being a, just a jerk. But I wasn't. My thing was, I won't put anybody's work on the page that is not only is that a really great knife maker or good enough that to be interesting, but the human was good. The person behind it was good. And people in that group started to appreciate it. And every time I said, hey, look at this guy, they did. And that person, you know, would kind of get blessed by that group yeah. of like, hey, you can count on the fact that if I say something is amazing, it probably is. It's probably better than what I make. Yeah. The guys who I promote on there, Claudio Sorrell, Adam DeRosiers, Jason Knight, Sam Lurkwin, they're all better knife makers nice. than me. But I'm so comfortable being like, hey guys, check, check this out. out. From that, and then and then going out hunting, showing, you know, these guys show when they go hunting, they show what they're doing, they're carving, knife fighting, whatever their whatever skill they have, or if they're shooting guns or whatever. As that group grew and my I started to become more se secure in what I was doing with my job as, as a knife maker. I started to feel like I needed to give back because I didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve to have the number of people, you know, I sell a knife for 250 bucks and I'm seeing it on eBay for $1,200 and I'm going, I don't understand this, you know, but I'm definitely blessed. Well, how do I do something to bless back? Yeah. And so the group becomes a, a tool of philanthropy you know, we, we raised uh, over $65,000 for cancer and leukemia just in the that's last crazy. four months. Yeah, that's amazing. And it's just based on like a knife I make. And so to me, the, the group is like, yeah, we're kind of strict in there. You can't be an a-hole. Can we use that word? Yeah, here? we can yeah. use that word. Okay. Yeah. We like <laughs> that you, word. You can't be a jerk about things. You can't come on and just troll. We kick you right off. You know, I get to say whatever I want, but it's my group. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, building that building that community it's a closed group on facebook called the dark timber brotherhood you can say hey i saw you have to try to get in 
You have to have pictures of yourself. If it's just a picture of a kitty cat, we won't add you. If it's a picture I'll of I'll like, never make it in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it only has kitty cats. Listen, from the first moment I looked at you, I thought, adorable kitty. <laughs> so, 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 but, but, but you know, those guys really show up. So this yeah. year at Blade Show, there's probably a couple, over 100 guys that have shown up from the Dark Timber Brotherhood. They came from Japan. They came from wow. London. They came from Australia. They came from all over the U.S. And most of them knew that they were not going to be able to get one of my knives. And I think that is so... They came because they want to see each other it's and, awesome. and, and, and do stuff. So I actually just... I, I know we got to get going, but... That's cool. In, in October, we hold... We, every, every once in a while, the guys have held a gathering um, in the woods. They like go out, do a big camp out. I think a lot of companies do something yeah. similar to that. Uh, Ethan Becker does this kind of yep. stuff, right? But so... Um, we're going to go out in October, and I'm actually going to make this one. I've never been able to make one, but I'm nice. going to make this one. And there's going to be a competition for knife makers. And it doesn't matter how big or small the knife you bring is, it's going to be performance and look based. And whoever wins that competition based on building my campsite, the campsite I use, watch some nothing fancy videos and it'll help you know how to build a campsite better, in my opinion. If you think you're a great knife maker and you want to come out and compete, whoever wins that competition, I'll do one run of your knives with my mid-tech company and I'll pay you 15% of my net profit on that run, which is a way above the industry that's standard. An, that's an insane yeah. royalty. It is. Yeah, it's it is. Awesome. But I'm so down. I'll do it one time and then I'll never use your knife again. It's <laughs> yours to go off and do because where some companies will steal a guy's design and try to run yeah. with it, yep. I won't. So. I want to see, I want to bless the knife. I, I, I'm trying to have the group bless people in need. I'd also like to give back to the knife community That's awesome. and bring some other names out that are deserving. So you could be in for one year, but that, that knife better be awesome. I'm telling you, it better look good. Jason will be judging that competition also nice. with me. Cool. So they have to make a knife and then make your camp. Yeah, they, they don't need to make the knife there. Don't make the knife there. Okay. <laughs> so they bring the bring knife. They bring the knife. <laughs> and, then, and then it's going to have to baton. It's going to have to do, It's gonna nice. have to make a one log fire. Oh, yeah. It's going to have to skin something. Nice. It's going to have to make a deadfall. It's going to have cool. to do it. Yeah. You know, and it's gonna, the steel is going to need to hold up. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's what I'm looking that's for. Really and cool. it needs to be beautiful. Dude, I'm stoked yeah. to see it. Yeah. yeah. So, Peter, this is awesome. This is cool to put a face with the brand. Thanks, man. And I think your people know you. They, it's, yeah. it's wonderful to have you on here. But I really want Blade HQ to get me out to the rest of the world also. <laughs> well, here you are. I'd like to be able to make more than 150 <laughs> knives at a time. There it <laughs> is. I feel like they're going to sell. You guys can then always have my knives on your shelves. I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> Peter, thanks for being on, man. Where, where can I buy one of these? You can't. You can't. Yep. So, so when you do a run, we'll do a drop at Blade HQ occasionally, right? Right, so every two months right now, you guys have been getting knives yeah. from me. You, normally those sales, I think your last sale lasted 30 seconds. 30 seconds. That's how it goes. Um, yep. So so you got to be on the drops. you got to be on the drops. Being on the Dark Timber Brotherhood gives those guys the advantage because I go to them. I mean, really, actually, they just watch me drink Moonshine and Forge. And so they'll be like, I'll start talking about it, like, hey, man, the, you know, hey, guys, I'm going to do this. And, th and then it happens. But I also will start, I will tell them why I believe in that knife. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I never have made story. anything I don't believe in. So yeah, yeah that's what's up. Okay. That's great. So yeah. occasionally, guys, we'll have drops at bladehq.com. Otherwise, go jump into the Brotherhood. What's it called on Facebook? It's called the Dark Timber Brotherhood. Dark on Timber Brotherhood on Facebook. That's the place to find Peter. Yep. And that's the place to find out when Blade HQ's drops are happening. So, yeah. Peter. And you can do a bunch of good for like humanity. Exactly. Yeah, it sounds like a great place. A great place to spend some time right. on the internet. That's right. That's right. Dude, awesome. Thanks, Thanks for, for being, being on, here. man. We appreciate, appreciate it, bro. It was Thanks. fun, guys. Thanks yeah. so much. Thanks, guys. Awesome.